Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rachel and if you're new here, my husband and I renovated a camper, lived in it, traveled full time for about seven months and we've been taking a break here over the winter. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to plan your RV trip. So if you have never planned an RV trip before, watch this video. And even if you have, if you've been RVing for quite some time, uh, there could be some tips in this video that would make your next trip run a little more smoothly. So let's get into it. Now, before we start, this is just based on my experience and mostly how I like to plan our RV trips, whether we're living in it full time or just going out for a weekend. So there's that. Step number one is to define the purpose of your trip. Is it a relaxing trip? Is it gonna be an action-packed, activity-filled trip? Are you going to visit family? If you wanna do a hike or something specific like that, then obviously you're gonna to have to pick a destination that's gonna allow you to do those things. And if you just want like a relaxing trip where you're not out really doing much of anything other than just hanging out at the campground, then that's gonna open up some different types of destinations as well. So that's why I say define the purpose of your trip first before you even figure out a destination. So that obviously brings me to step number two, that is to figure out where you are going. Obviously you can't plan much without knowing where you're going. Maybe you already have a destination in mind. Say you know you have to be in, I don't know, Fort Collins, Colorado on this particular date and you wanna camp. So that helps you out there. But maybe this is your first time RVing, you're renting a camper and you're just trying to figure out where to go. I wouldn't plan on going too far if that is the case. Maybe just find somewhere a couple hours away, a general destination that you know, okay, there are some activities to do there. Watch YouTube videos about that area, read travel blogs, all that kind of stuff and obviously, Look at a map. <laughs> Once you figure out where you are going, step number three is to pick a campground. There is so much to consider when picking a campground. It can be one of the most time consuming parts of planning your RV trip in certain scenarios, I should say. So for example, uh, a lot of this depends on the type of rig that you have and what your needs are going to be for this RV trip. Do you have solar on your rig? If not, are you going to need electrical hookups? Even if you have solar, is there gonna be enough sun in this location that you're picking out? Are you gonna need full hookups, water and sewer? all of those types of considerations. And that is why I like to use apps when uh, choosing a campground because you can filter campgrounds by those specific needs. So I like to use Campendium, The Dirt. There are a lot of other types that are uh, similar to that. I'll make sure that I drop all my recommendations down below in the description. I've talked about this in previous videos, but even once I find a campground in one of these apps that looks like it's a good fit for our rig, our particular needs, what we wanna get out of the trip, I'll still go to that campground's website and do some more digging. Do I need a reservation? Um, do they have first come first serve sites? Is it a state park? Is it on national forest land? It's just not a one size fits all scenario when choosing a campground, so that's why I say it can be a pretty time consuming process. And step number four, I guess this could be 3.5, but we're gonna call it step number four, find a backup campground or campsite. We have been in so many situations where our number one choice or even our number two choice, both of those have been gone. Have a backup, at least one backup in the area that you know you'll be able to get to if your first choice, something falls through. And I say that even if you have a reservation and you think, okay, I'm locked in, no issues are gonna come up, you just never know. You could get to that campground and maybe it's not what you expected. Something is just not fitting your overall vision for this trip and you wanna move. I just always recommend knowing what other uh, campgrounds or campsites are in the area just in case. Okay, so once you know where you're going, where you're staying, that is a huge part of the process. The next thing to do, step number five, is to plan your route. So when you're RVing, it's often not as simple as just typing in your destination and relying on the GPS. You're gonna wanna make sure that the roads that you're taking, the route that you're taking, is RV friendly. Now, if you're on the interstate or you know a major highway, chances are you'll be just fine. Um, but if you're in a mountainous area or on, I don't know, any kind of back roads, there could be a situation where your RV is not equipped for those roads. We've been there before. Now, some apps do have features that are usually paid features 
that allow you to um, plan your route and you can find a route that is suitable for your rig. We actually don't use that. What I like to do, maybe we should use that, but what I like to do is just um, do a little more research. Once we find a route, I look at it, I see, okay, are there any mountain passes or back roads or anything like that that we need to be aware of? Is there an alternate route? And I'll even like type in, can I tow my RV over whatever route? Just to make sure. For example, when we drove across Yosemite National Park, I made sure that we could tow our camper over Tioga Road before we attempted to do it, which it really wasn't bad. Um, yes, you can bring an RV over Tioga Road. There have been other situations, like we were in Vermont and, were we in, yeah. We were in Vermont in the fall and we ended up on some road that was um, not meant for RVs. So we'll leave it at that. We got ourselves into kind of a sketchy situation. So plan your route, um, do your best to make sure that it's going to be a good fit for your rig's capabilities. Step number six is to plan your activities. This is pretty self-explanatory. One thing I will throw out there is just like tent camping, things tend to move a little more slowly when you're camping in an RV. We typically like to pick one main activity if we're you know, camping on the weekends, one main activity for the day, and then some sub activities that we can fit in as we go. Step number seven is to plan your meals, which also sounds pretty self-explanatory, but there are once again, more things to consider when you're meal prepping or cooking in an RV. Say you're getting to your campsite on a Friday and you think, oh, perfect, we'll get there, we'll get set up, we'll make some burgers and a salad or some potatoes on the fire or the grill or whatever. Um, okay, that sounds fine, but what happens if you get there and your site is more difficult to back into than you initially expected and it takes a long time and you can't get level and you're rushing to get set up before it's dark outside and before you know it, it's like after eight o'clock and you haven't eaten and you're cranky and you just want something fast. Can you tell that I've been there before more than once or twice? Keep things simple or at least have a simple back up to the meals that you plan on prepping. Also, some other things to consider, what's your refrigeration situation gonna be? Uh, are you gonna have a cooler? Are you gonna use the refrigerator in the RV? And that brings me to the next step. Step number eight, stock up on supplies. Um, and I'm not just talking about like little things like batteries, flashlights, cooking utensils. I'm talking about the bigger things that you're going to likely need to run everything in the RV. Do you have enough propane? A lot of RVs need propane to run the stove and the refrigerator and some other elements as well. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have enough propane. Do you need a cooler? Do you need ice? Do you have a flashlight? Do you know where that flashlight is? Does it have batteries? Do you need a headlamp for setting up? And obviously you're going to need to stock up on groceries for all of those meals that you just planned. Okay, I think this is step number nine. My list is not numbered correctly, but I think this is step number nine. So when you're reaching this point, you already have a lot of your trip planned. You know where you're going, you know where you're staying, you know what types of activities you're gonna be doing, the meals that you're gonna be having, all of that. Now, step number nine is to figure out what is in the area that you're gonna be staying in. And I don't mean activities, I mean like, is there a grocery store nearby? Uh, where is the closest gas station if we need gas or needs to stock up on supplies? Is there a decent sized town in the area? Um, I mean, even not to bring the mood down, but where's the closest hospital if something were to go wrong? I just like to know what's nearby. It gives me peace of mind going anywhere. And just because there aren't a lot of amenities nearby doesn't mean you shouldn't go there. I'm just saying if the closest town is an hour away, just be aware of that. And finally, step number 10 in planning your RV trip is expect things to go wrong. If things go according to plan 100% of the time for all of your RV trips, um, I don't believe you. Or you're the one who should be doing this video and not me. From our experience, things go wrong. Things take twice as long as you expect them to. You have to be flexible. You have to be okay with moving plans around. 
but it's so worth it. That's all just part of the fun. And RVing really does take some reps consistently to get the hang of. We're still learning a lot, even though we lived out of ours for seven months. The first few weeks on the road were really difficult and we felt like lost at certain points, but that's okay. You figure it out as you go. And if you take one trip and you think, wow, I really struggled, that's totally normal. If it's easy the first time, you must be an RV wizard. But it's also incredibly rewarding to have this little house that you can carry around with you to go visit these beautiful places. It's just fantastic. And there is a reason that so many people love it. One last thing I'll note, I don't think you necessarily have to do this, but maybe consider this a bonus step. I like to keep everything in one document. Uh, I have a spreadsheet or just a table where I list things like where we're going, where we're staying, the cost per night, how many miles we're gonna be driving on a given day, what our meal situation is going to be, and any other important notes on there. That way I can just keep track of everything, I can send it to Cole so he's not asking me questions about where we're going, how long is our drive, all that type of stuff, and um, it just helps me stay organized. So I would suggest doing that as well. You don't have to do a spreadsheet. I mean, you can literally just have all this stuff in a note on your phone, but just having a record of all of those details somewhere is a big help. I hope this video is somewhat helpful for you guys, whether you're just thinking about the idea of RVing or you've been on a couple trips and you're looking for just some other tips. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Right now I am putting out at least one long form video per week, usually on Mondays, and that's in addition to YouTube Shorts, which I've been putting out more consistently as well, and that will continue to be the case as we get deeper into 2023. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.